Hi, my name is Derek Cook and I'm a certified journeyman with the American Farriers Association and uh, we've been doing a series of uh, fairly technical videos on the acute phase of laminitis. Now we're going to uh, come back and try to simplify these matters. My, my best friend in the whole wide world is a guy named Doug Hogue. He's another farrier and uh, he always says you should break things down Barney style. So we're going to attempt to break this down Barney style. It's, um, it's a fairly complex process but it, it's really not when you stop and think about it so um, let's start off with a reactive oxygen species what is a reactive oxygen species um, they're also known as free radicals uh, they're associated with oxygenated stress and basically all it is is an atom that has a uh, unpaired electron so in the body a lot of time that would be an atom of uh, uh, oxygen they got Got, they lost an uh, electron somehow, and so they really uh, have a propensity to want to bond with something. And uh, the other byproduct a lot of times is nitric oxide. So those are the two most common free radicals that you will find um, in the body. These free radicals are often referred to as a superoxide. So um, what we've used is called a superoxide desbutase. And basically what this does is it bonds with those uh, free radicals. It, it takes those, uh, it fills in the gaps with those electron deficiencies. And it generally will do, um, it's generally a two-part process. The first part of the process, it will lend itself uh, with some hydrogen atoms. And uh, you get uh, hydrogen peroxide. And then it will do another reduction uh, within that and cause it to become water. So that's how it takes these free radicals and it basically makes them something useful. And uh, in our process, these free radicals, once they start uh, losing electrons, it's kind of like a free-for-all and, uh, and things can go downhill very quickly because these um, electrons are just bouncing around and it's called a cascade effect, which means it, it can grow very, very quickly if something doesn't uh, happen to interfere with that. So with, with our process, we're basically controlling what's happening um, with these oxygen molecules and there's also some uh, uh, nitrogen molecules that are bouncing around there and uh, nitrous oxide is what it is, I believe. So uh, it's making these things to where they're stable, it stabilizes them and that cascading effect is, uh, is slowed down. And because the cascading effect is slowed down, that also uh, makes the uh, matrix metallic protonies uh, stop cleaving themselves and putting themselves into action. So it does two things at the same time. It, it stabilizes the environment uh, where, the, where the desmosal bonds of the lamina are, and then it also preserves your extracellular matrix that provides the scaffolding and organization uh, for these, uh, these cells to live in. In a lot of ways, that almost seems too simple, but we found this to be very, very effective. We're 25% uh, through our clinical trials right now, and uh, thus far we have had a, uh, a, a really big stroke of luck in that all the horses that came in uh, to the vet clinics that we've chosen to help us with clinical trials, uh, they were uh, within 24 hours of treatment. So. Uh, we do know that the matrix metalloproteinase number two continues to accumulate for the first 48 hours, and we don't know for sure how far we can push that envelope, but I'm sure we'll find out as the clinical trials progress. Um, but we're 10 for 10. The horses that were treated were um, within the first 24 hours. They, they suffered no damage to the, uh, to the bonding of the uh, dermal lamina to the epidermal lamina and there was no rotation that occurred uh, within the hoof wall. So we're pretty proud of that, really. If you found this video helpful uh, and, and it helped you understand this disease, please hit the like button and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to continue to uh, put information out there about laminitis and try to, try to simplify something that has seemed to become something that uh, is somewhat mysterious and magical, but it, it really isn't once you understand the science behind it and, and the reasoning behind it. Um, feel free to share these videos. We'd like to get this information out to horse owners so that they know that um, there's something that can be done about laminitis. Uh, visit our website. It's www.beatlaminitis.com. Uh, you can pre-order 
our product, uh, Desmosman there. We've run into some uh, uh, obstacles with the COVID virus. Uh, one of them has been packaging for sure. Uh, bottles are not available right now because of the hand sanitizer being put into that, the demand for hand sanitizer. So, um, but you can pre-order. We have uh, ordered enough metalloporphin for 8,000 treatments. And uh, we will be delivering those right after the first of the year. Um, and you can reserve yours. The, the unfortunate thing about our product is you really do need to have it on hand because uh, if, if you don't have it on hand, then, uh, then it, there's not time for the mail to run. So uh, it needs to be applied immediately. So one of the things though, if you don't have our product, uh, cryo therapy works pretty good putting a horse in uh, ice bath for three days up to their knees and hocks uh, you have to do both the front and the back end dr. Pollitt found that there was a large percentage of the time that the uh, the um, hind end would rotate uh, the fronts were only put into the ice bath so we need to treat the front and the back during the acute phase uh, just to be sure